Hello, welcome to part one of this three-part Sparks 1524 look at the National Naval Aviation Museum on board Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. I'm Nathaniel Miller coming to you from naturally neighborly Niceville, Florida via a live recording. Naval Aviation first came to Pensacola in 1914. To this day, the base remains the hub for training naval aviators, maintenance personnel, and aircrew. It's only natural that one of the world's premier aviation museums would grow out of the fertile, sandy soil of the air station. Opening its doors to the public for the first time in 1963, the museum's first acquisition was an example of the 1956 Goodyear Inflatoplane. Yes, you heard me right, an inflatable airplane. The Goodyear Inflatoplane was a concept developed to try and rescue downed airmen behind enemy lines. The idea was that the inflatoplane would be deflated, packed up, and dropped to the airmen. They could then inflate it and fly to safety. The idea never really took off. The inflatoplane was never bought, and a few examples are in museums to this day. The Aviation Museum in Pensacola has never actually publicly exhibited its inflatoplane because shortly after it acquired that example, it got other aircraft such as a Bearcat, Phantom, and items that were a little more suited to public display. This deflated any idea the inflatoplane had of being part of the display, and the aircraft remains stored in the museum's archives. Also, the inflatoplane the museum got was marked U.S. Army. Just saying. Approaching the museum today, visitors encounter a spectacular facade featuring an F-14 Tomcat rocketing skyward from its pedestal, and an entry hall featuring the larger-than-life statue, Spirit of Naval Aviation. The statue showcases aviators from 1914 through 1990 swapping stories about aerial adventures. I've been visiting the museum since I was a freshman in high school in 1987, and I have seen it grown exponentially. Ironically, for a man who ended up as a career military photographer, the first photo I shot in the museum wasn't until 1992, and I photographed the entryway from what was then the main entrance. Today, the museum has grown considerably with a new entryway beckoning visitors to the exhibits and the original entryway, now the QB Bar Cafe, a full-service cafe featuring the plaques, tables, fittings, and other artifacts from what was once the Officers Club at Naval Air Station QB Point in the Philippines. 1992 saw not only the establishment of the QB Bar Cafe, but two significant additions to the original building. The Blue Angels Atrium was opened a ceremonial center used for special events featuring four A-4 Skyhawks painted in the colors of the Navy Blue Angels hanging from the ceiling. Three of these Skyhawks actually flew with the Blues, and all four aircraft are veterans of combat operations in Vietnam. The aircraft are spaced as closely in formation as they flew in real life. The other major addition in 1992 was the World War II atrium featuring a life-size mock-up of the island from the light carrier USS Cabot, CVL-28. The model of her island surmounts a simulated flight deck featuring numerous World War II aircraft. The museum's unique Sunken Treasures exhibit takes you to the bottom of Lake Michigan where the museum actually has recovered many of the aircraft on display. Many of these warbirds, their useful combat life ended due to wear and tear on the fuselage, were transferred to training duties over Lake Michigan. Due to the expected mishaps, many were ditched and the cold, dark, fresh waters of the lake preserved them in remarkably good condition. The Naval Aviation Museum will enthrall you with everything from flying boats as big as modern airliners to exhibits on famous ships such as the World War II carrier USS Enterprise. You'll see space-aged artifacts such as a replica moon lander and one of the actual command modules used during NASA's Skylab missions of the 1970s. If you care to visit the Naval Aviation Museum or you're interested in what they have to offer, I've linked their website in the description below. Also, if you care to read about my own adventures, part one of my column is also linked in the description below. As always, if you like this video, please hit that little like button. Feel free to share it if you wish. Part two of this series will take a look at a few specific exhibits to kind of give you an idea of the scope of the museum. Part three will then focus on a specific aircraft that has a very deep personal and professional connection to me. Thank you for your time, and until we meet again, remember to always go and do great things.